the RE Ghost Box. Coming up next on Monster Hobbies, let's build it! Hello everybody, welcome back to another Monster Hobbies Let's Build It! My name is Trevor Slescu and I'm the owner of Monster Hobbies. Welcome to my basement shop. <laughs> Down below in the dark, dark cellar! Now anyway, I, when I did my Monster Hobbies What's in the Box episode of the Ghost Box, I got a lot of people requesting for me to actually build one of these to show you how it works and how it operates because it is a magical, magical ghost box. It looks like a normal box and then when you put a coin on it, the skull head comes out and sucks it back into the box. So, let's go down to our bench and start with episode number one where I'm going to just work on this a little bit, not too much. All right, let's go down to our bench. Hello everybody, welcome back down to our bench and tonight I'm going to open the lid on our ghost bank. I'm only going to do one little piece of this because I want to build the suspense. <laughs> no, actually it's quite late at night and I don't think I want to do too much on the model because if you're tired you can't do a really excellent job. So tonight we're actually only going to do one piece. but. It involves paint, so it's going to be kind of cool when we're done. So without further ado, let's come down to the bench and see how to build this scary bank. And here we are down on the bench with our ghost box. I'm just going to move the lid out of here for a minute. And the component that I'm going to actually work on tonight is the actuating arm, which of course is this very interesting skull. Woo! -hoo -hoo -hoo. So, <laughs> I'm going to move the whole box of instructions out of the way because really all I'm going to do tonight is work on this part here. So to begin with, I'm going to grab my sandpaper block and my hobby knife and these side cutters here then we will just zoom the camera down and do a little position work pardon me okay so here we have our skull head actuator so we'll just take our clippers and clip it off the parts tree. And it's actually caught on four places. And the final one. Okay, so we freed that from the parts tree. Now we don't need our side cutters anymore. Actually, I am going to grab my little file here. And what we will do is carefully file these little screw points off. Until that's flat. Then I will use the finder sandpaper on the back of my sandpaper block. And just sand that smoother. Smooth. Sand that smooth. <laughs> All right. And then here I can use my rougher sandpaper too. Sand that flat and flush. Okay, so we will 
I'm gonna let you do yours there off camera and then now remember along here there's a seam line you can feel it it's rough on your thumb as you're dragging your thumb across this way so we're gonna just take our hobby knife do some adzing as they call it which is basically scraping and we'll go along here too you want it so that it's got a nice little roll right there you can feel it with the edge of your thumb for when you've got it nice nice and rounded so what I'll do is now that that's feeling good is I'm just going to go around and clean up the rest of this mold here this nice model part and I will return in a sec there's one thing I forgot to mention here before you get too crazy on the cleanup. There's two pins right there and there. Do not sand these or file these off. These are these little pins are actually what's going to help in catching that coin uh, on the bank when this thing comes out of the box. You know, like that. It's going to catch that coin and pull it in. So if you can sand these off, it's going to have a difficult time trying to get that coin, so keep the keep the sandpaper and that away from these points. Okay, now carry on and sand away. Okay, so I have cleaned off the seam lines along my actuator here. And I'm just going to use some 600 and very lightly sand on here just to help give the uh, plastic a little bit of a tooth on it so that when I paint it the paint can cling into the uh, grooves from the sandpaper and uh, it won't be trying to to hold its own on completely smooth plastic maybe you could use some 400 on here would have actually been better I just grabbed what was lying around in the corners here on my Bench. All right. So, yeah, here we go. Is a minute of sanding too long? <laughs> All right, so we're getting a little bit of the sheen off of it. A little bit there. And now this should be about ready for paint. Remember you want to get the super high gloss off of here. Okay, so what I'm going to do is go upstairs and I'm going to wash this off to get rid of all our dust. And then dry it. Make sure to blow off any of the lint from the rag. And then I'll come down and show you how to paint this thing. Welcome back down to the paint bench. And here I've assembled a few colors. These are Citadel paints from the Games Workshop. The first bottle we have here is Xandri Dust. And that is a base color. Then we have a shade. This one is a Seraphim Sepia. And then we have a layer number one. And that is Ushabti Bone. And a layer number two, which is called Screaming Skull. And I've got a thing of water here and a little plate, porcelain plate, where I mix my paint colors. And of course, we have our part that needs to be painted, and I've mounted it on this heavy stand behind the rib here, just to hold it. Now, from what I can see, oh, and I'm going to use this brush here. So from what I can understand and see of this, this arm is only going to come out enough to show the vertebrae back here on the skull and the skull head itself. 
So we don't really need to paint from here back. So we're just going to paint from here forward. So let's start off with the Zam... <laughs> Zandri dust. So the first thing we will do is bring our mixing plate over here. And then we're going to pop the cap on our Zandri dust. And I'm going to jab a bit into the brush here and then dip it in our water and then I'm going to mix the water with the paint. This will give it a little more flow. And I'll add a bit more here. Because these base colors are a little th on the thicker side. So by adding a little water and giving it a flow like this, it'll allow us to have the paint move the way it's supposed to. So I'm going to start here and make sure that I get the Zandri dust color into all the little cracks and crevices. And of course painting here. And I notice a little string there. Okay. So I just paint this as a solid Necessary. Right about now, it'd be great to hear some like music on my radio if YouTube allowed it and didn't say that everything is copyright. <laughs> okay. What kind of music would you like to listen to as you do this? Leave your playlist choices in the comments below. Okay. Get a little bit of interaction with you guys. Alright, and I'm going to paint this into the eye sockets as well. Okay, come on. Play Alice Cooper's Welcome to My Nightmare, or... Something from Rob Zombie, you know. Or you could even play some Fleetwood Mac, haha. <laughs> or some kind of millennial music full of woo woo. I don't know. Homeboys make some noise, I don't know. <laughs> Run DMC singing It's Tricky to Rock a Rhyme. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Whatever you guys want to listen to. You could listen to classical music. You could listen to Edgar Allan Poe on audio cassette. Yeah. <sighs> okay. Brahms Lullaby. <laughs> Actually, I think you're probably going to be listening to me overdubbing this with some safety YouTube music YouTube approved something or other you know I'll see what's in the playlist and play it which you're probably grooving to right now so as you can see I didn't use too much of this paint and yet I've pretty much got this covered so we will just let this dry off camera. There, see already, this is starting to look like something other than just black plastic. So 
let's just give this a little little bit more here and that's probably good we'll let it dry now that the Xandri dust has dried on our painted skull head we're actually going to use the next color here which is a shade now this is a very thin down shade it's called seraphim sepia and if you can think of like the old black and or actually before they used to use a sepia tone for photographs this is much the same kind of color as that sort of thing and as you can tell this is a little more like water so I've got my skull head here from the bank <laughs> from the bank the International Bank of Skull Heads okay so we will just let's move the bottle here notice I don't have the the plate I'm not gonna need it so as you can see this shade goes right into those cracks there can you see that yeah there you go very nicely nice flow in there and this is how it's used A little shout out to my friend James here. I know you haven't really used these type of things like this, but this is how they go. <laughs> so, pretty simple and well worth the actual investment in these, I find. So, I let this kind of pool into the cracks there, as you can see. eye sockets see this flowing out pretty good this is only one brush full of this just make sure you get it in the nose try to get some of those bubbles out of there too okay and of course let's just get a bit of this under here Okay, now this will take a little longer to dry though because it's thinner and wetter than the Xandri dust was. So there. Now I'm going to let that dry and then we will paint on the Ushabti bone. So now we are going to apply our first layer coat of Ushapti bone and I've got this brush here that I use the bristles are stiffer than the first brush and this will help in our dry brushing technique I'm just shaking my paint here off camera okay so we have our Ushtabi bone and I'm just going to tap the end of the bristles here into the paint so that all the paint is on the end of the brush and then I'm going to wipe it here until it's just lightly coming off the brush and let's start here on the vertebrae and just paint it in like this now I'm not trying to paint deep into the whole um, model here but just to brush it across the top leaving some of the more uh, the shade and the wash and that sort of thing sorry shade and and the base coat to appear so again very lightly I did paint underneath the teeth there just so that it would come up a bit okay 
So remember, if you need some more paint, swipe it into the brush and then wipe it out of the brush. And you see if you just drag the brush nicely across, you will avoid getting it getting paint into those cracks on the skull head. I'm going to try to keep the same direction on the brush. A little bit hard to paint around the uh, tripod of the camera here. Need to find a better camera angle for this. Okay, and I'm going to go downward here on the face. And what's nice about these layers is that they end up drying fairly quickly. So you can move on to the next layer almost right away. I still need just a little more of this color. Just to bring it down this way. Now the amount of uh, layer that you put on here is entirely up to you. Okay, so there is the, the bone color for that. So now let's go on and apply the Screaming Skull paint. And now we have our final layer, the Screaming Skull. This is layer number two. It is lighter than the Ushabti bone. <clears throat> and we'll just open it up here. And again, I'm using the same brush. And same technique. Apply a bit of paint to the end. Just turn this around. And we will work from the vertebrae again. Now with this, I'm not going to go too far down because this lighter color is basically bringing up. So each time we paint it brings it up a color degree. Now with this I want to have it so it's like the light. And light hits usually down at different angles. But in this case I want to go straight down. So in order to get this effect we want to think of where sunlight would hit. So of course it's going to hit primarily on the top. It would come down here and hit on the tops here on that cheekbone and on the tops of the teeth. Okay, we have a hot water tank going. <laughs> Oops, Let's see, I painted it in the wrong direction. We have a hot water tank going, and we have someone emptying the kitchen sink <laughs> for a nice waterfall sound effect. All right, anyway, this is what I get for doing this stuff in my basement with the family around. <laughs> okay. So there we go. So that is how you want to use that color. And now you can observe the handiwork. Okay. There is one final stage we can do here. 
This is the Citadel Dry Paints, and this is Praxetti White. So this paint operates a little bit differently. As you can tell, it's pretty thick inside here, and it almost looks like it is a bottle of dead paint, or dried up paint, but really it's not. So again, like we did with the layers, we put a little bit on the end of the brush, And we now have a piece of paper towel and we just wipe this out of the brush just so that there's enough in the brush here. I know that kind of sounds strange, but so what we want to do is this will give a little bit more white into the bone and again much like the previous layer we want to just go directly where the sun's gonna hit this the most which again is a little off the teeth up on the nose ridge and we'll just do a little light bit right on the top of that skull. And there. Now you can see the highlights in there. And it is looking a lot better. Now as for the eyes, we can actually darken these <coughs> with a bit of a brown paint or something. So uh, let's go down and try that. Actually, before I get into the eyes, I want to redo these cracks because I did get a bit of layer number two and some other things in there. So I want to pronounce those a bit better. So I have here this very, very thin brush. It's a pinstripers brush. It is a, what is this, 19, 18 over zero. So I'm going to use the Seraphim sepia again and very carefully putting my this hand here with my elbow on the table and then bracing this hand on the other table part of the table going to just follow the lines here with the Seraphim sepia. And just redo these cracks here. Being careful not to to bring the wash or the shade, I mean, up onto the actual um, layer paints because I don't want to get rid of the detail that I just put in, of course. go that restores the cracks now let's move on to those eyes so in order to get the eyes darker we have been using seraphim sepia shade I'm going to use agrath earth shade in where the eyes are because this is quite a darker color as you can tell the seraphim sepia is a little more orange this is more brown so I'm going to use this brush. It's a number two. <clears throat> I could use better brush in here actually, but I don't seem to have one. <laughs> okay, so we just put the Agrath Earth Shade, the brush into the Agrath Earth Shade, and then. here 
just carefully darken the tone. And we want to bring these little drips that are forming down into here. Just wipe off a little bit off the edge there. Ah, oh, our water tank stopped. So there we have darker eyes. Almost looks like he's wearing sunglasses, but of course, once the paint dries, it'll look a little more like it should. Could even put some of that Agrath Earthshade into the nose recesses. So, I will do that again using the little pinstriper brush. here just to make this a little more pronounced And there's our skull sitting on the old purple paper, looking nice, very nice indeed. And now as it comes out of the coin box, it will do this and drag your coin in. Well, I hope you enjoy that exciting episode of Monster Hobbies Let's Build It, where I got to show you how to paint up the skull head actuating arm of your ghost bank. So don't forget to tune in to part two coming up very soon, maybe next week, <laughs> where we get to work a little more on the ghost box. And if you like these videos and you wish to help support us in our work, please go to our YouTube homepage. And if you look in the banner, there are some icons there. One of them is a PayPal icon. If you would like to contribute to us, so we can continue making these great videos, please click on that PayPal button and it'll guide you to do the rest. And don't forget to check out our monster models at www.monster-hobbies.ca. I'm going to leave a special link down below that will take you right to the Ghost Bank page. So if you want a Ghost Bank, you can check it out. And if not, just check around on the rest of the website. It's pretty cool. And if you would like to see some of our other videos in this Monster Hobbies Let's Build It series, you can check them out here and here. And I also want you to check out our Build a Monster contest from 2016 down here. I'm going to do one every year, and that's the best video I got right now for it. And don't forget to like and subscribe to us right over here and click that notification bell so that every time something comes up, you get to see it firsthand. And until next time, pleasant screams! Ha ha ha!